Hey there everyone, Scapegoat Stephen, we're back with another video battle report for Marvel Crisis Protocol. This time we've got X-Men versus Avengers. It ends up as Avengers, but you'll see a really interesting combi roster in just a minute when we go over the team's roster. So yeah, first we'll look at X-Men, who'll be on the left-hand side of the screen, played by myself. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you will have Avengers, played by my opponent. So the X-Men roster, uh, Storm, solo leader because uh, frankly I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Cyclops in the game like you know he's an interesting character outside of the game but I don't think he, he necessarily makes a good character for Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, yes as you look down the list we've got Beast and Cable I could run this in theory as an X-Force list although I didn't put any X-Force specific cards in my sort of selection although it is something I'm definitely considering I'm also really interested to see what happens eventually with X-Men as far as like a big five six threat character goes that is an affiliated character fingers crossed the phoenix i'm really really like at the moment running x-men wide you may have noticed in my previous web warrior games as well i quite enjoy that that sort of wide cheap roster very different to my a force which is kind of why i'm enjoying it just something a little bit different so anyway storm beast cable domino Gambit, Honey Badger, Magic, Rogue, X-23, and my only unaffiliated splash is Lizard. Uh, you'll see why in a minute from my tactics cards. We've got Brace for Impact, Children of the Atom, First Class, Follow Me. So this was filmed prior to the change. Follow Me, so Follow Me is now also a restricted card. So honestly, Follow Me is getting binned out of this list. Uh, Indomitable, Jonathan the Unstoppable, Journey Through Limbo, Mission Objective, To Me, My X-Men, and Exceptional Healing. Follow me might get replaced, I guess, by a card for X-Force. I'm not sure which. I'd have to go sort of digging a little bit to get an idea. So next we're going to jump into the really interesting Avengers, he says in air quotes, list my opponent brought to the table. So Avengers, in inverted commas, uh, we've got Captain America, uh, Steve. We've got Doctor Strange with the Soul Gem. Uh, could also be the Defenders leader. We've got Groot, Hulk. Loki, Malekith the Accursed. I don't think you can go Cabal in this list unless you go super tall. You've got Rocket, Star Lord, Thanos with a Space Gem, and Winter Soldier. So, yes, at this point, you could run Guardians, Cabal, Avengers, or Defenders. I think Cabal would very specifically be like a Malekith, Winter Soldier, and a and other like large splash character. But cards wise, you've got Avengers Assemble, obviously Avengers card specific, Deadly Duo, Face Me, Follow Me, again, restricted card. Uh, my opponent um, he has changed his list since we filmed this, to be perfectly honest, because this was him messing about with some ideas ahead of the London Grand Tournament, which occurs at the end of September, beginning of October. Uh, as I said, his list has changed reasonably wildly, actually, since this. And, the and he's debating whether or not Follow Me stays or whether or not he gets rid of one of the restricted gems you've got gamma launch indomitable midnight phantasmagoria pentagram of farah lala i'm always terrible at pronouncing that one i believe is a defender's card uh smash and we are grouped so i really like this roster i think it gives you so many options as far as characters go you could go tall you could go wide wide-ish i guess with with like a, a star lord rocket group winter soldier and a another character I, I don't know much else really to, to say about it I, I just in i like the idea of being super wide and super full of different affiliations i as you as you've seen play a lot of a force and my a force roster is very specifically just a force i have dabbled in a mixed roster with web warriors occasionally don't think i want to do that moving forward i prefer having a larger number of options for my for my a force specifically but this kind of does the opposite of that and it's avengers in theory but loads of other options available to my opponent i actually really like this as an idea whether or not it will prove to be you know great moving forward i suppose depends a lot on his own play style and the opponents he encounters but we'll see how this game goes there are a few other games filmed with the roster with slight tweaks to this that I have in the pipeline. And then obviously we'll see how he gets on at London Grand Tournament at the end of the month. But I really like this roster, as I said. We can't really enthuse about it anymore. Uh, the only thing that obviously slows it down is the restricted gem options and then the restricted cards. But there's definitely room for iteration and improvement on it. So let's get into what we ended up with for our matchup. 
So my opponent got priority and I chose 18 threat. We've got the Hammers mission, so Fear Grips, Welders Unworthy Terrorized Cities, and Infinity Formula Goes Missing. So that's eight total points available on objectives every turn. So I went, as I like to do with X-Men, I went wide. So we've got Storm, Honey Badger, Lizard, Magic, Rogue, X-23. At 17 points, I probably... Uh, which was the option also for threat. I would have dropped Rogue probably for Beast. Not sure. That's why I went with 18 threat, because obviously Rogue is a powerhouse of a four. Uh, and I went with Brace for Impact, First Class, Indomitable, Journey Through Limbo, and Exceptional Healing, because I have three Healing Factor characters. He went with Captain America, Steve Rogers, Groot, Hulk, Rocket, and Winter Soldier. So, technically, just an Avengers roster uh, with Steve and Hulk and then obviously Winter Soldier topping out that extra character that, that with his special rules that makes them Avengers. And we've got Avengers Assemble, Brace for Impact, Face Me, Follow Me, and We Are Groot. So deployment-wise, Hulk is going to go front and centre, and I am going to deploy Rogue just off-centre. We then put Winter Soldier towards the bottom right. We've then got Honey Badger, Groot, and X-23 and Steve, Magic, Rocket, Storm, and finally Lizard. So I put Lizard down as my final drop as an attempt to, to bait where I was going to put him because I didn't really want to throw him away against like a sort of large damage target like Hulk. And in the end, I thought he could go one-to-one -one with Winter Soldier because Winter Soldier shouldn't be able to get a huge amount of damage through even with his constant shooting. So my opponent has priority. And he is just going to double move Groot. So he's going to move once to there, a second time to there, and basically be by that infinity formula. I'm going to activate Lizard, and Lizard is also going to double move onto that hammer. Put himself... I did try to see, could I put him somewhere where he'd be both able to pick up the hammer and next to the infinity formula? Sadly not. Uh, Rocket's going to double move and pick up the hammer on the far side of the screen. Magic is going to move to the Infinity Formula because she can just about get there. And then she actually does have range on her energy attack to shoot into Rocket once she gets there. Uh, there is like a, I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do with her. So yeah, there you go. Moves to the Infinity Formula, shoots Rocket with her over the, It's a range, uh, range four, four dice energy, which just gains her a power. So he takes it on Groot. And we managed to do two damage to Groot because Groot doesn't like energy, but obviously Rocket also doesn't like being shot at. So Winter Soldier is going to activate and he's going to move to the Infinity Formula. He is then in range to shoot Lizard and I completely forget at this point that I have cover from Storm's leadership on Lizard. Uh, so he shoots and does two damage even after the damage reduction, which obviously would have been one if I'd remembered the cover. He then gets rapid fire and does another two damage and bleed. So that only would have been two damage in total rather than four damage, uh, which again is unfortunate that I forgot about the cover at that particular point. So Storm's going to move. Uh, so she's also by the infinity and she's going to shoot Rocket again with a nice energy shot and hit Groot and do another two damage to Groot. Again, because he's not a huge fan. Of energy although i appreciate i am powering Groot up uh, caps going to there's a bit of discussion here actually who does he go with next you go with cap does he go with hulk uh, you know hulk isn't going to be able to get into anyone really this turn so cap does have a range attack so he is going to look at activating cap so cap's just going to move to start with he is then going to play avengers assemble uh, to move himself and hulk just because it then gets them a little bit a little bit further forward. So off goes Cap, and then Hulk just steps to the other side of the hammer. Cap is then going to shield throw into magic, and just do one damage. Uh, he does get the ricochet, which unfortunately we misplayed here. We, we had it ricochet into Storm, forgetting of course that Storm has stealth by any other name, and uh, shouldn't have been able to be targeted, uh, but she only takes one damage. So I'm a little bit concerned here that Hulk's just going to run and grab the hammer in front of my in front of my X23 and Honey Badger. So I go with Rogue thinking, oh, it'll be fine. I can pick up the hammer and also get to that Infinity Formula. Uh, no, I apparently quite badly measured it. So 
what I end up doing is Rogue will just pick up the hammer because I think she's got to go now because then I can threaten X-23 and Honey Badger into Hulk. And then she moves. As I said, she is just short of that Infinity Formula, unfortunately. Uh, Hulk is going to go. Uh, he's going to pick up the hammer that's behind him. He's then just going to double move. So we've got one and a second move here, two. And then he's going to pick up that building that Rocket stood on and throw it at Storm. Maybe in hindsight I should have braced here, uh, but I take three damage, I believe. And uh, yeah, Storm's not a huge fan of that, but is what it is, has to happen. Uh, I'm more worried as well that he's then got priority. He's got priority next turn, so I've got obviously the wider set of characters. So I move Honey Badger twice to put her between, basically in one of Hulk and Rocket, so that her sort of pseudo incinerate is working against them. So it gives them the minus one uh, defense. X23 is going to move and just slash Hulk and manages to get four damage and bleed through on him. Uh, perhaps not again the smartest idea because now I'm setting up Hulk for a big old next turn. Uh, so that is the end of round one. So end of round one, I have two hammers. My opponent also has two of the hammers. I only have one of the Infinity Formulas. My opponent has two. So that was unfortunate. Like I said, a little bit of mismeasuring on my part, and uh, you know, un unfortunately, that's the way it goes. Maybe I should have sent uh, Lizard for the hammer, my home hammer, and my home Infinity towards the camera. Uh, but again, live and learn. So that's the end of round one. And we're going into round two. Again, my opponent has priority. So we're coming into round two. I appreciate that on the video, it looks like I've scored myself four points there. But we do catch that in just a minute. Remembering that obviously, there we go, that rogue wasn't actually within range of that infinity formula. So my opponent, unsurprisingly, as Hulk is in the middle of four of my characters, is, uh, is going to activate Hulk. Uh, so he is going to start uh, with an attack into Storm, because mostly because he's looking at this point of trying to get Storm's leadership off the table. Uh, I will say now, I don't think I use Storm's leadership or capitalise on it as much as I should for this game. Uh, it's a really great leadership, and uh, unfortunately it's not something that, as I say, I, I've used particularly well in this game. Uh, he does strike Storm with Hulk and just daces her and does get that push so just pushes her out towards the top of the screen. Uh, he then hits magic and dazes her as well uh, doing four damage. Uh, so yeah he's uh, he's doing good is, is, is Hulk this round. So not great. He's then going to Gamma Leap. He's looking at his options for cards at this point. There you go. He's going to gamma leap to there. And then he's going to play follow me into Groot. Groot's not doing a huge amount. Uh, all he does is double move. But he does have the power to play we are Groot. Principally, again, for that healing on himself and on Hulk. Uh, Hulk, obviously, having taken the four damage from me going off with everyone's favourite X-23 assassin. So Honey Badger is going to go next. And Honey Badger is going to take advantage of the fact that Rocket has no friends near him and uh, smacks him just for the one damage, unfortunately. Uh, she's then going to use her spender uh, to hamstring Rocket and attack him again. Uh, but this time she dazes rocket now what i could have done off this if i'd been properly reading my card is i could have got a move off this hamstring attack and gone and stood myself next to hulk which probably would have been a good call here or at least moved and stood next to someone uh, just other than rocket to get the the sort of minus one defense off Uh, it should be noted as well, Rocket drops that hammer behind Hulk. So Winter Soldier's going to go and shoot Lizard, do one damage. Uh, get his rapid fire trigger. And then he is going to uh, attack again with five damage into uh, Lizard. So I exceptional healing it down to one. Uh, he is then going to shoot me again and daze his Lizard. So I completely forget about that extra attack. 
Um, exceptional healing was a mistake um, here. And I, I kind of acknowledge that that was a poor choice on my part uh, to use there. So Rogue's going to activate. And annoyingly, uh, Rogue has to double move to get to this hammer that's at the bottom of the screen. So she's not going to be able to then back up to this infinity formula. So many little placing issues in this in this game by myself and you know I could have done so I could have placed off Lizard to get back to the Infinity Formula here using Storm's leadership. So again, poor choice by myself in actually, you know, executing that leadership. Steve's gonna double move just so he is stood next to he's within sort of bodyguard range of rocket and stood next to that Infinity Formula objective. And X-23 is going to go. X-23 is going to Claw Rush Hulk and do two damage. And she obviously gets a move off of Claw Rush, which we'll do in just a sec. She goes to there. Uh, she's then going to Claw Rush again, because she's not quite close enough to pick up the hammer, and do four damage to Hulk this time, and then get that move and pick up the hammer. What I Again, what I probably could have done here is perhaps moved her so she was out of... Oh, no, I, I, no, that was it. I measured it. I couldn't quite move her so that she was out of two of Hulk and within one of the hammer. But she goes and just picks up the hammer. It does give her some plenty of options for next round for targeting. Uh, but that is a very quick round two due to how many characters I lost to be dazed. So unfortunately, there are another infuriating three points for me and four for my opponent. As I said during the, the narration of the previous clip, I think I misplayed uh, with Rogue. And I think I also misplayed with Honey Badger there uh, because I could have probably gotten Rogue to that Infinity Formula and taken me up to seven points. And I'm pretty sure I could have got Honey Badger into Hulk. You know, again, just that little bit of extra damage into Hulk, it would probably would have been, what, an extra two damage maybe uh, across. But then it would have taken me from six damage to eight damage on Hulk. Although... You know, maybe that might not have been so good. I think the threshold he was at for getting the extra die would have been triggered anyway for his next activation. But it would have, you know, been useful to see where that went. Again, poor, poor use of Storm's leadership or lack of use of Storm's leadership on my part. So let's go into round three and see what happens. So coming into round three, just a bit of clean up from the end of round two. and. Probably won't be surprised to know that Hulk, Hulk is going to activate first. Just doing a power phase, including the power people get from the infinity objectives. So Hulk is in range, range two of Storm. So he is going to start with a casual. Hulk smash into Storm. He did see was he going to be in range to do it to X-23, but he is marginally out by like a hair, so he's not going to be able to attack X-23 straight off the bat. But you know what? He wants Storm's leadership out of the way. Not that I've been using it particularly well, but he wants it out of the way. So he Hulk smashes Storm and just straight up KOs her and just gets her off the board immediately. There you go. So that's my leadership gone. He's then going to Gamma Leap. He's debating here, does he go with Magic or does he go with someone else? But he's just going to Gamma Leap just a tiny bit. So he's in range of X-23. And then he's just going to Strike her. And he manages a total of three damage off that Strike. He's then going to try and throw X-23. Uh, he's thinking if he throws X-23 into Honey Badger, that might do a bit of damage. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, for him anyway, I'm indomitable in response. So that X-23 can't be thrown. Mostly because I don't really want half my characters being thrown around. Again, here, after X-23 took damage, I really should have moved Honey Badger next to Hulk. Because then it would have obviously given me the, the sort of pseudo incinerate for following turns. So I'm going to go with magic. Magic is going to journey through Limbo Hulk. So obviously it gets that incinerate onto him and pushes him just so he's within one of Honey Badger, but out of one, crucially, of that infinity formula objective. 
she is then in range two of him to attack him, but chooses to attack Groot first. I'm not quite sure what my thinking was here, uh, but I managed to do zero damage into Groot, but I do get bleed and incinerate off on Groot. Maybe that was the intention, I think, behind my, my thought process here. You know, get some damage into Groot, uh, and, and those two conditions, really. And then we're going to do a strike into Hulk, uh, and of course the strike into Hulk does four damage. Uh, into Hulk. Uh, so that was a tasty bit of a hit there from her. So, Rocket's going to go next. He's just going to move there, so he's contesting that infinity object, that infinity formula objective, and he's going to do a Hadron Enforcer in 2x23. Uh, he only needs to do 2 damage, but he does daze her enough, or does enough damage to daze her, and then drops the hammer there. He just accidentally moved the infinity formula objective. So you're just putting that back. And then there we go. There's the hammer there. So the hammer's next to cap. So I'm going to go with Honey Badger. Um, you know, let's try and get some damage into Hulk while he's here and incinerated and while she's alive. Uh, she's just going to do two attacks, I believe two strikes. And uh, she's just going to do one damage each time, which is a little bit unfortunate. Not quite what I'd hoped to have gotten at that point in the game. But, you know, it was, a, again, it's just a little bit more chip damage into Hulk. Should be noted, she doesn't benefit from her own aura of minus one defense as well. So Hulk only had the incinerate. So Bucky's going to go and he's going to shoot Lizard. And he's going to do two damage on the first shot. And then he's going to rapid fire for no damage. And then on his second shot, he is going to do nothing. So Lizard's going to go. He's going to move. He's going to pay to throw a you know, suplex Bucky through himself. Uh, just on my shoulder there, sorry. Uh, just throw himself to there. So he's out of contesting the Infinity Objective and is close enough, uh, hopefully, to be attacked by Rogue the following turn. Uh, Lizard's going to then just do a standard attack into Bucky and score four damage. So he does, you know, reasonable chunk there of, uh, of damage to Bucky. Uh, Steve is going to then pick up the hammer that's next to him. And he is going to move into bodyguard range of Hulk. Because my opponent at this point is a little bit worried that Hulk's just going to go down um, very, very quickly and easily. Uh, with X-23, Honey Badger. Basically, he's got to kind of take out one or two of those characters over there. Uh, because I think X-23 and Magic are probably good enough uh, to take out Hulk. Should be noted, I do have priority next turn, because I only have Rogue left to go. My opponent has Groot and, obviously, to finish Captain America's object, uh, turn. So, it means I am going to get the first lot of attacks, whether that be with Magic, or whether that be with X-23, into a minus two defense Hulk. So this is what he's considering here is is the bodyguard range with cap. Is it worth sacrificing the one point on the infinity objective to stop Hulk from dying? So basically that's kind of what we're discussing at the moment. A little bit of talk about uh, who went where, who has priority, all that sort of jazz. There. there we go. There goes cap into bodyguard range he's then going to throw a shield at honey badger and just do two damage to honey badger so rogue's going to go she is going to charge bucky uh, she's only got to do one damage to daze him which she does successfully manage She's got two hammers right now, so she's rolling seven dice on her standard attack. And she's going to move back with her second action <coughs> just to ensure, to ensure that she is holding that objective. Apologies for the cough there. And final activation of the turn Groot is going to attack Magic. He's going to do one damage to Magic. He's then going to attack her a second time, do three damage, which leaves her on one health. Uh, he's then going to spend to root both Honey Badger and Magic at the end of his activation so that's the end of round three and we'll see i have priority going into round four and we'll see what happens then 
So four points for me. I've got the two hammers that are on Rogue and the two near side Infinity Formula objectives. And three points to my opponent. He also has two hammers and he has the top left Infinity Formula. But obviously Cap came off the top right one to be able to protect Hulk from me taking him out. So let's see what round four holds. We're getting very, still very close, 10-11, uh, in favour of the Avengers. So coming into round four, now I'm looking at the fact that X-23 has full health right now and Magic only has one. So Magic kind of has to go at this point. Uh, the fact that she has Mystic Attacks is quite useful as well. Um, so she is going to open with a Dark Child attack. I'm just checking how much power she's got and what she can do with it. So she's going to Dark Child into Hulk, who is then bodyguarded onto Cap. Unfortunately, we only do one damage on Cap, despite the fact obviously he can't increase his defense against Mystic damage. But we do get Bleed and Incinerate off, you know, nice little extras. Uh, we then do the same again into Hulk. And uh, the dice just go absolutely crazy here. I think I get like three crits and uh, we just daze Cap. It's unfortunate because if I'd managed to do that with the first attack, then I probably could have gotten a similar amount of damage into Hulk. Never mind, that's how it goes. Uh, I then decide to leave her there. I'm not 100% sure if she should have sort of teleported away, perhaps, uh, to sort of get towards the top end of the screen. But I think I only had two power, so it's only a two place, and it takes me off that Infinity Formula objective. So Hulk is going to go next because he needs to go before X-23 comes in and ruins his day. And he is going to Gamma Leap. Uh, so he's forced to do this because we're looking at the moment of can he throw magic to the other side of himself to then get a beam into magic and X-23? And unfortunately, he can't quite. He wouldn't be able to get her base in the right place uh, because he's obviously got to slot her through uh, both Rocket and Groot as well, who are like goalposts there uh, with Hulk stood directly opposite. So he Gamma Leaps literally just to move like half an inch forward, if that, throws magic to the other side. He then Thunderclaps and manages to do no damage into magic. Like, it's just, he rolls below. I spike really well. Um, and But he does get three damage into X-23. I then remember that Honey Badger has a, a thing where she can move closer to Hulk and moves there. He then decides to spend uh, on doing Hulk smash into X-23 and there's not a lot really that I can do to stop that. Uh, so he just KOs X-23, who's not really done a lot this game actually. A little bit disappointed with the way I played her. Um, could have played her a lot better. He doesn't get the wild off, so he doesn't get the throw. So he can't throw magic. He can't throw it into magic to then also take out magic. What I should have done here is paid to force Hulk to that Hulk smash into Honey Badger. In, in, and that kind of would have kept X-23 alive. And then X-23 probably could have killed Hulk. Uh, so that's on me. Um, Honey Badger is going to use her spender into Hulk and do one damage. Uh, she's then going to do her spender a second time into Hulk. And she's going to daze him. So finally, we've managed to daze Hulk. What I probably could have done there, obviously, if I'd kept X-23 alive, is I could have you know, moved and got a, uh, got a daze from her on Hulk and then got a good attack into Groot. But never mind. Uh, she does get moves off that spender, so that's why she's now on my opponent's Infinity Formula. Granted, she can't do much with those objectives, which is a little bit of a shame. Again, would have been helpful to have had X-23 alive at this point. Um, but that's, that's unfortunate it's on me for not remembering. Uh, my opponent's going to go with Bucky next. He's going to Red Fury Lizard and do no damage. Uh, the Assault Rifle attack then does, does no damage uh, off the back of that. He gets the push, so he pushes Lizard away a little bit. There's then discussion about what does he do with his second action on Winter Soldier. I think he ends up deciding to move. So, so we're currently looking at how many points does he need to score to win here? Basically, he needs five. So look, he's looking at where does he go? Realizes Lizard has a range three attack, so not great. So he's just going to move himself to there. 
Uh, Lizard's going to go. He is going to move back onto that Infinity Formula. And so he's got Line of Sight to Winter Soldier again. He's going to do his Spender, uh, which he gets two. Oh, sorry, he throws Winter Soldier first. Then he's going to do his Spender and do two damage, slow and bleed into Bucky. So at least he's got a lot of bleed out of my opponent, which actually really helped on Hawk, actually. It wore Hawk down over time. Uh, so Rocket's going to go. He's going to move. He's going to pick up a hammer. He's then going to move again to contest that Infinity Formula in the top right and pick up that second hammer. So he's now got two hammers. Rogue is going to charge Winter Soldier so that she get, basically gets to the other side because she needs to be booking it now to the other side of the board. Uh, she, unfortunately, with seven dice, only gets one damage into Winter Soldier. Uh, but, you know, the important thing is she then moves with a second move uh, to a sort of central location on the map. It also means that Winter Soldier is, in theory, easily killable by Lizard. Um, but obviously, potentially, he could kill Lizard in return. So yeah, he's trying to decide here, what do I do with Rogue's second action? Um, you know, I am looking to move her towards the centre of the board. There we go. Uh, Groot's going to go. He's then going to move and attack Magic. Because she's got one health left. And again, that good Dark Child attack could go off into Cap but he removes her by KOing her. So very quick round four. Uh, we'll go into a very quick round five as well because we didn't quite finish the game here. So I score three again. Uh, sorry, I score four even this turn, um, taking me to uh, 14 because uh, I have... Maybe, I, sorry, I might, might have written that down wrong. My apologies. I think I scored three uh, to take me to, I've written 14 there, uh, but that doesn't make sense. Uh, so I've definitely got one Infinity Formula and two hammers that are on Rogue. Uh, we are contesting the top left. No, we're not. Sorry, only groups on the top left. Uh, but my opponent has two hammers and two objectives and gets four. So he's definitely on 15. I should probably be on 13, I think, unless I've missed something. I'm confused about who's holding what objectives. So, again, really close uh, for want of having uh, you know, a more useful character like, like X-23 alive. Again, this is not my first time using X-Men, but I think so. I've only played like five or so games with them really looking forward to messing about with them a bit more and trying a bit more but let's see how round five plays out so coming into round five i do have priority again and the board is looking real sparse right about now so rogue is going to go she is going to charge rocket debate about do i go for groot because obviously groot's energy defense is quite low but i can't get there and rocket does have two hammers so we charge rocket uh, bodyguards obviously gets played from cap uh, and we only do two damage into Cap, unfortunately. Uh, so, because he spends, I believe, to up his defense, uh, which he can do against energy and physical attacks. So we only get the two, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, we then throw the cement mixer at Cap, uh, who braces, for, uh, which I forgot my opponent had brace for impact. We then attack Cap again, uh, who bodyguards again, uh, taking three damage. Uh, leaving him on one health. Um, and then we decide to... We've got enough power just to mutant absorption him. Uh, and Cap has five power right now. And we take all five power off him. Uh, so he's got no power left and one health. So it's really unfortunate, really close there to taking out Cap. That was kind of my last, my last gamble there, really, to try and get Rocket out. Uh, my opponent then decides to activate Rocket and the probably quite a sensible move, actually, I think, here by him. Uh, he's just going to double move Rocket so that he's near Groot. So there's just no chance of me being able to, to take Rocket out. Uh, because Rocket, you know, he can sacrifice. He only needs one point. Rocket has two hammers. And Groot is sat on that point at the back. So if he just runs Rocket, because there's no way I'm going to get Lizard over there. Just runs Rocket, so Rocket is in range to be defended by Groot. And that's all he needs to do, just score those couple of points. Because uh, I can't get that top right point. I've only got two hammers. Uh, 
and Lizard would have to come off the point to try and score it. So uh, my opponent's then going to go... Oh, sorry, I'm going to go with Lizard then, sorry, and just pick up Winter Soldier with my Spender for three damage. I then spend three to throw that piece of scenery, just because I can, uh, and then end his activation. Uh, Cap is going to punch Rogue uh, and do no damage. He's then going to shield throw into Honey Badger and do one damage uh, with no ricochet. And then Honey Badger is just going to KO Cap. Just going to smack him. I think with her spender. I can't remember which way around she does it. But, you know, she KOs Cap. And that's basically the end of the game. So again, ignore the 17 here. It should be, it should be 16. Uh, really, for the X-Men. But a, a good, solid win for the Avengers. Good tactical play by my opponents. And misplays by myself. As, as I've said during the video, mi just missing Rogue, not Rogue, Storm's leadership a couple of times. Uh, it was just a bit poor on my part. Uh, not activating Honey Badger's Punch Me Instead ability, which could have really, really been key. And basically kind of changed the very end of that whole game section. Just because it would have had X-23 alive instead of Honey Badger. And X-23 is obviously more of a threat and can do things with objectives. So never mind. It was just unfortunate on my part. So yeah, good solid win. 18-16 to 16 to the Avengers. Uh, really close game actually. So many characters gone by the end of it. Uh, but t Hulk just took too long to get gone. And actually I think he was probably MVP this game for my opponent. You know, he, d he just removed activations from me. Uh, by dazing or KOing people quite regularly. So yeah, that was X-Men vs. Avengers. Uh, coming up in the future, I've got a few more videos in the bag, a couple of A-Force. Uh, we've got some games vs. Avengers, uh, Malekith features uh, in, in at least one of those games. So we shall see you again next time. <laughs>